you ever get over the top of the golf ball and feel really tight, well, I'm going to show you some ways to make a more effortless swing, get more club head speed, and just have a lot more fun playing golf. We've got Q here who's going to read some of the numbers. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, there's things you can do in your swing that are going to make you really tight. One of the most popular things is keeping the right elbow kind of tucked into your side in the backswing. We don't really want to do that. What happens when we, when we keep that, that arm tucked in, we make a shorter hand path so our arms don't go back as far and that slows down your club head, your club head speed or how far you can hit the ball with the driver. So if you think about this, the only place I'm touching this club is right here in the handle. So the longer the period of time or the more space that I have to move that handle, the more club head speed I'm going to get. It's also the smoother and the more effortless your swing is going to be. So if I keep my right elbow just kind of tucked into the side of my body, I'm not really going to get a lot of swing speeds. So let's go ahead and try one out like that. That was a really good swing. Hit it great. You're, you can hit great shots doing that. There's nothing wrong with that as far as how solid you can hit the ball. But what were the numbers on that one, Q, as far as the distance? Yeah, club head speed was only about 105 miles per hour. And total distance, it went 275, but you hit it really, really well. Yeah, so a perfectly hit shot. That's about all I'm going to get out of that. So 105 miles an hour club head speed. Now, let me free this up. As I go to the backswing, imagine I'm letting my elbow go up to the sky. I'm letting my arm re reach a little bit higher. The good thing about this is you don't have to be very flexible to do this. If you can take your arms and lift them this way, that's really all we're doing. We're lifting them over the right shoulder. Where people tend to lose some flexibility is when they think about going back this way, trying to swing back behind their body because they simply can't rotate their shoulders and their arms enough. So don't worry about getting tons and tons and tons of rotation. Think of it mostly as getting those arms higher, that right elbow higher. Let me try that out on this one and let's see if we get a little bit more swing speed and a little bit more carry distance. So that one wasn't even hit as solid, dead straight, right down the middle of the fairway. But I can see just from my visual without even Q telling me the numbers yet, that one carried a lot farther. The other one landed short of this hill that I'm looking at. That one carried completely over the hill. So what were the numbers on that one, Q? Yeah, 119 miles per hour on that one. Total distance was 315. So I picked up 14 miles an hour of swing speed, feeling like it was actually a little bit less effort and hitting it a heck of a lot farther, almost 40 yards farther with the same amount of effort, actually a little bit less effort. So when you keep that elbow in, I have to get really quick. I have to get tight. Everything feels like I'm just trying really hard and not getting a lot of swing speed out of it. Now, piece number two, when sometimes when you get those arms a little higher, you may have a tendency of coming a little bit more over the top or hitting a little bit more of a slice. That's what the second piece here is really, really important. As I start my downswing, the next thing that's going to make this effortless is getting some lag. Now, what I feel like and what I think you should feel like to get the most lag that you can is in the backswing, don't get very much wrist set. Feel like the club's not setting very much. So the arms are getting higher, the wrists aren't setting, this club is short of parallel. And then as you start the downswing, then that's when you want to feel like the club is setting. Now, another secret to be making this lag happen is you have to feel the club going this way, shallowing out a bit. If I'm trying to get lag by going this way, cocking the wrist straight down with this, this club shaft steeper, I'm really going to struggle to hit solid contact. I want to feel like as I shallow the club this way, that's when I'm getting my lag. So the club feels like it's working this way more to the inside. That's a great thing to pair up with our first piece, higher hands, because now you can take advantage of having those higher hands. You're still going to be from the inside, and now you get this huge angle that you can let whip through contact there. You're going to get a lot more swing speed. So let me go ahead and try again here, adding that nice bit of lag in there. Let's see if it even increases my swing speed a little bit more. There we go, hit that one nice and solid. Exact same line the last two shots. That one flew over the hill again too, so I know that one's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, 119 again on the club head speed, up to 320 on the total distance. Yes, yeah, so a little bit more distance, right around the same great swing speed. So the, the big mistake there, I don't want you to feel like you're getting a lot of wrist set in the back swing. So I don't want you to feel like you set the wrist early. Feel like you don't set the wrist early, you let them set later. And then you also want to shallow that club out. Now, the final piece to getting this effortless swing is making sure that you finish the swing. So many times I'll see players that do everything right in the backswing. They get big loaded up, they start to get a little bit of lag, 
and then their body stops and they flip it and everything at impact just gets destroyed. All the good work they did in the backswing gets destroyed in the downswing. A great thing to do to make sure that we take advantage of that good backswing and we actually deliver that swing speed through the golf ball is to finish the swing. So whenever you come on through, I want you to feel like you're rotating as much this way toward the target as possible. Notice my right heel. If my right heel stays on the ground, there's no way for me to go through this shot. My body's gonna stall. It's gonna feel like a lot of effort. I have to let that right heel come off the ground and swivel all the way around this way. Another trick to this, open that left foot a little bit, especially if you're a little tight in your hips, you don't feel like you have tons and tons of flexibility. Opening this foot is gonna allow you to finish your swing, come all the way around to that lead side. And then finally, your legs with this. If my legs are bent, as I start my downswing, I have some ability to rotate my hips. So when my legs are bent, I can fire the muscles in my legs to rotate my hips. If my legs are locked, now I don't have any ability to open my hips because the muscles that open your hips are in your legs. So you have to make sure that you feel like you have some flex in your legs and you don't, you don't go like this at the start of the downswing. I don't fire my legs completely from the start. I keep them bent and that allows me to rotate around to that good full finish. Let's try one here. And I'm really gonna feel like I get to a great finish. And we'll see if we can get even a little bit more distance than I got on the last couple. All right, hit that one really well. What were the numbers on that one, Q? So 123 mile per hour in a club head speed and 321 total distance. So feeling like I got through the ball really helped me to deliver the speed, you know, through contact and not just cut off my swing. Now, a big piece that I see people go wrong with is the second thing we talked about there, and that's when you're getting the lag. So many players that I see, and I bet you can relate with this most likely, start to lose a little bit of that lag. Maybe it's not a cast, maybe it's not throwing away the lag, but it's just not as much lag as you'd wanna get. Well, there's a specific thing you need to do in the takeaway, and if I set my wrist the correct way, it makes it much easier to get that lag. We touched on that a bit here, but I have a video I call the pirate ship drill that really expands on that and helps you to get lag much more easily than you have in the past. So I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. It's one of my best videos. All you need to do is just go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description and you'll get instant access to that entire video. Best of luck and I'll see you soon. All right, so let's jump right in to one of my favorite videos I've ever done on lag. One of the ones I've seen the best results with and we'll talk in a minute why this is called pirate ship but it's really a play on a wide, narrow, wide drill or a wide, narrow throw drill that I've done in the past and have tons of success with. So if in the backswing, my club head kind of at parallel to the ground was say a good five, six, maybe even seven feet away from the center of my body. And the downswing, it's much closer to my body. That's the narrowing part because I had this big angle of lag. And then I throw all that out in front, really let those arms extend and I go wide again. Now, a lot of times I'll see players misinterpret this drill and they take a really good drill that's having tons of success and they do it the wrong way and they really struggle with it feel like a lot of hands and arms so if you've done this drill in the past and you feel a little bit out of sequence you feel like your hands and arms just aren't working right i bet this is exactly what you did so when you're going wide in the backswing that's all good most people get that correct you really got to rotate the body but when they narrow the misrepresentation that a lot of players will have is they'll narrow up the arms not the club head that we want to narrow, but they'll misinterpret this drill as narrowing the arms and they'll do something like this. I want you to think of your arms as a pirate ship. Here's what I mean by that. You've probably been to an amusement park before where they have one of these big giant pirate ships. Everybody's packed on there in these seats. And then the pirate ship is down at the bottom. There's a big arm. And then that arm starts swinging back and forth, just like a pendulum, right? And the ship goes back and forth. Well, the cool thing about this, so you can relate to your golf swing,